I already know that I'm a bit late to the party in the Trump call uh, with uh, Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, but I've got to talk about this because this is genuinely, it's shocking, even for Donald Trump, and I get that a lot of us were desensitized to the shenanigans that we see on a daily basis, but for a United States president to do what he did, this really is a new low, and when I say that, it doesn't sound persuasive because when we're talking about Donald Trump, there's always a new low, but the low has been lower than it's ever been. Like the bar is below the floor and he managed to um, still surprise me. So in this call with Brad Raffensperger, he is trying to convince him basically to steal the election for him. Now, even if Brad Raffensperger listened to what Donald Trump wanted and did what he wanted, it's still would not be enough at this point to secure him another four years. Nonetheless, listen to what he says. This is some authoritarian, dictatorial shit you're about to hear. The, having a correct, you, the people of Georgia are angry. And these numbers are going to be repeated on Monday night, along with others that we're going to have by that time, which are much more substantial even. And the people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. Now, do you think it's possible that they uh, shredded ballots in uh, Fulton County? Because that's what the rumor is. And also that Dominion took out machines. Uh, that Dominion is really moving fast to get rid of their uh, machinery. Do you know anything about that? Because that's illegal. This is Ryan Germany. No, Dominion has not um, moved any machinery out of Fulton County. We're having. Well, but no, but, but have they moved? Uh, have they have they moved the inner parts of the machines and replaced them with other parts? No. You sure, Ryan? I'm sure. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have. You don't have. Not even close. You got. You're off by hundreds of thousands of votes. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a. You know, that's a criminal. That's a criminal offense. And and you know you can't let that happen. That's that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. But they are shredding ballots, in my opinion, based on what I've heard, and they are removing machinery, uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can, both of which are criminal fines, and you can't let it happen, and you are letting it happen. Oh, you know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes which is one more that we have, because we won the state. So so tell me, Brad, what are we going to do? We won the election, and it's not fair to take it away from us like this. And it's going to be very costly in many ways. And I think you have to say that you're going to reexamine it, and you can reexamine it, but, but reexamine it with people that want to find answers, not people that don't want to find answers. Uh, for instance, I'm hearing Ryan, and he's probably, I'm sure, a great lawyer and everything, but he's making statements about those ballots that he doesn't know. But he's making them with such, he, he did make them with surety, but now I think he's less sure, because the answer is they all went to Biden. And that alone wins us the election by a lot. You know, so. Mr. President, uh you have people that submit information, and we have our people that submit information, and then it comes before the court, and the court then has to make a determination. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. Well, under law, you're not allowed to give faulty election results, okay? You're not allowed to do that, and that's what you've done. That's shocking. It's Donald Trump, but he's still a United States president. And you had a U.S. president say, I just want to find 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have because we won the state.
This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he just, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. He doesn't realize that he lost. And even if Brad Raffensperger obliged, you still need to win Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Like, Georgia alone is not enough for you to win this election. So, he's insane. <laughs> he is downright insane. And I was a little bit skeptical about whether or not he actually believed that he win. But after this call, uh, he believes it. Like, there's, there's no doubt about it now in my mind. He actually believes he won. Like, I think he's convinced himself that he's won. So he's bought into his own delusions, in other words. And he's just... He's a sick man, mentally speaking. He is... He's really, really ill. And it's almost sad. It's almost sad. Like, if he wasn't such a bad person... I would feel compassionate for him because of how far gone he is. Like, he, this is someone who is not healthy. He's not all there. And again, I've said this before, his family, the fact that they're not stepping in and trying to talk some sense into him is astounding to me. It is astounding to me. He then goes on to suggest that the uh, Republicans... In Georgia, uh, Kelly Loeffler, David Perdue, all of this is going to cost them the election if Brad Raffensperger doesn't cheat for Donald Trump. And it's funny, as he literally asks Brad Raffensperger to find votes for him, which is illegal, it's an impeachable offense. I mean, we don't have much time, but it is a, an impeachable offense. As he does all of this, he sounds like an actual mob boss, but not like the ones you see in movies, like the ones that you see in like these slapstick comedies, like not the serious movies, but the ones where they're like fucking uh, falling over themselves and, you know, walking into doors. We're talking like Corky Romano level mob boss. That's what we're talking about here. Because the things he says, like he, he doesn't just say, find me the votes. He also implies heavily so that if Brad Raffensperger doesn't break the law, then he's doing something that's illegal because you're complicit. You see fraud taking place and you're not saying anything as Secretary of State. That's illegal. Maybe there's going to be consequences for you. Like, it's... Again, like, I, 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 I'm struggling to find the words to respond to this. No amount of commentary can add to this. Like, this speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. Quote, there's nothing wrong with saying we've recalculated. He's literally trying to convince him to lie. Now, there are other um, lines that stood out, not in that particular audio clip. Quote, as you know, every single state, we won every state. He said we won every state. He thinks he won all 50 states in this last election. That is, I mean, to call it delusion it doesn't do it justice. Like, we need a new word. He's not just delusional. Like, he's crafted an entirely new reality. And he's living in that reality. And that, from an individual standpoint, is, is troubling because he has power. But the fact that people are joining him in said reality. You have Marjorie Taylor Greene, QAnon conspiracy theorist, now a member of Congress, showing up with a mask on that says Trump won. I mean, I'm glad she's wearing a mask, but that is insane. This is literally cult-level bullshit that we're seeing. Uh, also, he says, so dead people voted, and I think the number is close to 5,000 people. Completely just pulled that out of his ass. Um, you had out-of-state voters. They voted in Georgia, but they were from out-of-state. Of 4,925, you had absentee ballots sent to vacant. Uh, they were absentee ballots sent to vacant addresses. Yeah, there's no evidence for any of this. The only evidence that we have of somebody who's dead voting is a Republican doing it, using his dead mother to vote for Donald Trump a second time. That's literally the only shred of evidence that we've seen of voter fraud committed because statistically it is insignificant not enough to change the results of an election because it's not really worth it like who wants to commit voter fraud when the payoff isn't that high it's just what an extra vote or so but the consequences are tremendous it's a felony who wants to do that that's why it's very uncommon um so listen if we assumed that his delusions were true and everything he said was correct he still doesn't get that that's not enough for him to win. If Georgia flips, it's not enough for him to win. 
And I get why he's focusing on Georgia. It's because it's controlled by Republicans, so they should be doing what he wants, theoretically, right? But that's still not enough. So the fact that you believe you won, not just Georgia, but every state, there are no words for this. Like, we really are going to need some space between now and the time when we actually try to dissect this. Because while we're in the moment, this is too much. Like, but when historians look back at this moment, they're going to be shocked at the era that we're in right now. It is absolutely as bizarre as it can possibly be. And the saddest part isn't Donald Trump. The saddest part is that people believe him when he says this. When he says we want 50 states, people believe that. When he says that, you know, um, it, there's nothing wrong with lying and saying we recalculated, people believe him and they think, yeah, why can't you just say that? Why can't you just say Donald Trump won, Brad Raffensperger? <sighs> I mean, <laughs> this is just so bizarre and we're getting to a point now where he's going to be out soon. So is he actually going to like, flip the desk in the Oval Office and, like, try to barricade himself in? I kind of want to see it. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to see it. It would be bad for democracy, but it would be very entertaining. And it's looking like he might actually just refuse to leave. I don't know what's going to happen, but Jesus Christ, this is just... What a weird Twilight Zone universe that we're living in. Like, this timeline is clearly the stupidest of all the parallel universes. Like, what the fuck? Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly. <laughs>